So let's uh, let's get started. So if you guys have uh, that machine gun manual I posted, uh, you can follow along. I'll tell you what section I'm referencing, but uh, for the most part we're going to be skipping around uh, just because it's not the way I usually run this class. So uh, anyways, uh, we're going to start with uh, section 5 there, fire control. So uh, the number one thing that uh, that's important when you're a weapons team is uh, basically uh, whenever you get in a position, both of these weapons, the machine gun and the anti-tank weapon, are both static weapons, right? So they're going to be employed from one position against the enemy, and then you're going to displace, move somewhere maybe, and then set up again. So whenever you get in a position, uh, there's a couple things you should be keeping in mind, and that's kind of laying out the ground in front of you, alright? So uh, between your assistant gunner and yourself, whenever you get into a position with your machine gun or your AT weapon, you should always be picking... Uh, reference points, alright? And these reference points are going to be uh, uh, kind of used in target identification and uh, help you basically acquire the target factor. So if we were looking out uh, to the northeast here, um, as soon as we got into a position with our MG or our AT weapon, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find our cover and concealment, right? So uh, the platoon commander or the section leader, whoever's in charge of us, has assigned us a position, right? They'll usually tell us, you know, what way they want covered. Uh, they'll give us uh, what is known as a principal direction of fire, uh, and a, perhaps a left or a right of arc. All right. So within that space that we've now been designated to cover, uh, one of the first things you want to do is you want to sit down with your assistant gunner and you want to make some some references. Usually about three or four that are somewhere within your field of fire, so that you can quickly identify targets, because that's the number one concern of the weapon system. As a cruiser weapon or a uh, or a weapons team, you're like the number one firepower asset to the platoon at the at least at the the organic level. All right, so you've got the machine gun, right? And what's the machine gun's job? The machine gun's job is to kill people. All right, and if you've got the AT, the AT's job is to protect the rest of the platoon from armored assets. So we'll talk uh, in a second about uh, if you're the commander, where you might want to set up these weapons teams. But for now, we're going to concentrate just on uh, what you do if you are the actual weapons team members. So, like I said, we want to pick three or four reference points. And these should be things that are pretty obvious, all right? things that are, that are easily identifiable, and then you want to come up with some kind of word or phrase to identify them. So if I was looking to the northeast here, uh, I'd say, okay, we're going to make one of our reference points uh, reference the four bushes on the right side of the tree line to the front, all right, at uh, 060. Everyone sees that there's like four or five just kind of short, scrubby bushes there. Everyone see that? Yep, so, yep, yep. so we might call that the bushes, all right? That might be our reference point. And then perhaps another one, uh, this is kind of open terrain, but perhaps uh, one at the uh, 330 would be the tree line, right? The short tree line. That'd be another one. Uh, good ones are buildings, road intersections. Uh, if there's kind of like a distinctive tree, or a distinctive feature, right? Say like the the fucking looking or the funny looking tree or something like that. You know, it, it doesn't matter what it is, just as long as it's you know distinctive. If you if 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 you, the if the funky tree works, uh, by all means call it the funky tree. Uh, usually, if that's the case, anyone looking at that tree, will go, oh yeah, that's a funky one. Um, so whatever whatever it is, just you know, just uh, make sure you guys know what it is and uh, have communicated that between yourselves. All right. So that's the first thing, is picking good reference points, all right? And the reference point should be well-spaced, all right? You don't want, like, all three of them right next to each other. They should be deep into your fields of fire so that you can identify targets coming towards you, and they should be distinctive, all right? So uh, continuing, so the next thing we need to do in our train analysis, so we've, we've, uh, we've determined what our direction is, right? That's usually assigned. We've determined our left and right of arcs, and we've determined our reference points. The next thing we need to do is look for, uh, if we're a machine gun, and especially we're going to look for dead space. All right, can anyone define for me what dead space is? Um, that would be ground that you cannot see from your current position. Why can't we see it? Specifically. Because it's because lower it's elevation. elevation. Right, so dead space is uh, ground that you're uh, obscured from you, but you can see the ground behind it. So um, there's actually some dead space uh, to our 100 degrees there. If you look out onto the range, uh, you'll see that there's uh, trees that are half obscured, and then you can see the trees behind it because there's rising train behind it. That would be dead space. 
So, uh, so for a machine gunner, dead space is defined as any sort of space where you cannot see the lower half of a person standing. So if uh, you were to have your assistant gunner go run out on 100, at the point where you can't see his legs, that would be where dead space begins. And then once you can see his legs again, that's where dead space ends. And uh, particularly for the machine gun, uh, dead space is important because it's areas that we can't effectively cover uh, and prevent the enemy from moving through there, right? If, if you have dead space, the enemy can uh, low, low crawl or low jog through that space and you won't be able to effectively protect the rest of the platoon or engage those enemies. So if you know that there's dead space, right, uh, you should communicate that, right, to the section uh, or your uh, platoon leader, right? Say, all right, uh, we can engage everything except for this area uh, off to our front right here and kind of define what the features are because uh, what kind of weapon system might you employ to cover dead space effectively? Anyone? Mortars. Grenade launchers. Launch. Mortars and grenade launchers. Perfect. So if I'm the I'm a squad squad uh, squad leader, right? So all this applies to 249 gunners as well, right? So that's the class is a light machine gun. So uh, if I'm a squad leader, or a platoon commander, right? And I know that my machine gun has dead space. That's going to be the first place I'm going to set my mortars in because the natural inclination of enemy, as soon as they start taking fire, is to force to move into the defilade, right? For them, it's defilade. For us, it's dead space. We're the machine gunners. And as soon as they move into that dead space. I'm going to tell that to my, my, uh, my hire, and he's going to immediately put uh, effective fires on there with indirect fire weapons. And if you can force them into the dead space, you can kill them with that. So that's another way that uh, the machine gun can be effective. All right. So uh, we've, we've, uh, we've looked, found our target reference points. We've uh, established our left and right of arc and our principal direction of fire. We've found dead space. All right. Uh, so corollary to dead space for... For AT weapons, is going to be high-speed avenues of approach, all right? And this is any sort of terrain that allows enemy mechanized or armored forces to move on to you very quickly, all right? So, uh, for example, a forest would not be a high-speed avenue of approach, right? Vehicles have a hard time moving through forests. They're easily observable because of tree falls. Uh, just in general, they can't get to you as fast. You have cover and concealment from them. But if there's a big road going right into your position, that's your number one concern as the AT team, right? Because any other position, uh, the other supporting elements are going to be able to uh, recognize that there's a vehicle coming and you'll be able to move your position in time. But high speeds avenues of approach, you may not be able to have that luxury. So that needs to be your primary concern. All right. So those are the two major concerns for uh, both types of weapons teams. It will be either dead space or high speed avenues of approach. All right. So now that we've uh, laid out the train, we've done our train analysis, uh, the next thing we need to talk about is identifying targets and, uh, and giving fire commands. So fire commands uh, for shack tack usually are given by the assistant gunner, right? So the, the weapons teams tend to operate pretty independently, all right? So it's going to be up for you to pick and engage your own targets for the most part. And... Uh, so the, the, the way fire commands works is an easy way to standardize it. Uh, the way I like is basically you follow uh, this like little four-step four method. First is the alert, second is a direction, three is a description, four is a range, and then basically uh, targeting information, right? So that's method of fire and command to fire. So uh, first thing is an alert, right? So you always want to make sure that the person knows you're talking to them. And in the, in the, in the, you know, shack tack, the easiest way to do that is just say their name, right? So say something like, if ZX was my machine gunner, I was assistant, says, okay, ZX, right? That gets his attention, tells him I'm talking to him, right? I'm going to then give him a direction. And there's a lot of ways to give directions, all right? So the way I like is once you've established kind of what your principal direction of okay. fire is, you're going to call that front, right? Your left of arc. That's going to be defined as left, and your right of arc is going to be defined as right. Same on text. All right, sorry. Uh, okay, so like I said, we'll define the principal direction of fire as front. All right, we'll define our left of arc as left, and our right of arc as right. And then from there, you can just divide up the train. So you can say front left, right, would be like halfway between front and left, or half left works as well. Uh, you get the idea. Uh, you know, quarter left would be 
a quarter of the way between front and left, quarter right, same thing. Uh, the other way you can do is clock raise, right, going from 12 o'clock, you know, 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Uh, I'm sure everyone's familiar with how to use clock raise. Uh, you can also give a direction on the compass. Yeah, so the only thing about compass directions is you got to be mindful is that if you're not right next to the person, they're going to have a different compass heading than you will. So if you're going to give very precise directions of the compass, you have to be close to them. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is it can be just kind of, it can be, uh, take a while, right? So you have to find the bearing, and they have to open their compass and find the bearing, and sometimes even that just takes too long, all right? So that's why uh, if you can orient them in the general direction, especially if it's an obvious target, they'll usually be able to pick it up pretty quickly. Um, all right, continuing. Uh, so in addition, uh, tracer ammunition. All right, so in my, in my missions, I know at least, I provide tracer ammunition to all leadership and all assistant gunners. Uh, I know some missions have tracer mission ammo, some doesn't, but trace is a great way to identify targets. You just say, reference my trace, all right, it's an easy way to get them right onto the target, give them a general direction, so I'd say, you just say front, watch my trace, or something like that, and uh, that'll get most people right on target, very accurate, very quick, all right? Um, only downside of that is, with trace, you have to fire first, all right? So uh, make sure that they're ready to fire as soon as you, you start engaging them. And it, you can give away your position, all right? So keep that in mind if you're, in, if you're engaging a superior force. Uh, sometimes trace isn't the best option, especially if you want to stay concealed. Uh, but generally, trace is a very easy way. All right, and then finally, which, is, which should be your most common, is reference points, all right? So these are the ones we've established before, all right? So reference points, uh, you know, we set them up, and you can link them together along with other kind of orders in order to uh, really guide someone on the target really quickly and really efficiently. So an example would be, uh, and whenever you're going to use a reference point, uh, it's a good idea to, to preface it with the pro word reference, all right? And this basically lets people know that, hey, we're talking about the points we already established. So you can say something like, reference, red roof house, left to haystack, left to barn, right? So if there was like a red roof house that you designated earlier as kind of a reference point, and there's a barn next to it, you lead them onto the target via series of physical objects. And this is great because it works, doesn't matter where you are, right? You don't have to be even anywhere close to them, all right? It's very efficient because um, it gives them both a direction and a range. Uh, typically, especially if uh, the targets are in or amongst your reference points, it, which is why you want them deep in your fields of fire, uh, it definitely works uh, well. And uh, it's, it's uh, probably the most obvious, right? You're looking for physical objects. Usually they're distinctive. All right. So uh, any questions about direction or how you assign a direction? All right, cool. So then the next thing would be description. So description, basically, just as simple as it sounds, it's a description of the target. Enemy squad, enemy fire team, enemy vehicle, you know, tell them what type of vehicle, BTR-90, all right, BRDM, you know, BMP-3. Uh, give them a good description of the target so they know what they're looking for, all right? Also, if, it is, if it's an obscure target, right, so if you're, if you're engaging a squad in a tree line, right, it may not, the, the gunner may not be able to see exactly what he's engaging, probably because he doesn't have binoculars out or something similar. So if you're engaging a tree line, you tell him what the, the type of target is so he knows how much to traverse. And we'll go over that uh, when we go over machine guns and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, a squad is an area target and you need to engage it as such. So uh, knowing what the target is goes a long way towards engaging it properly. All right. So we have description. Uh, range, self-explanatory, right? Everyone should get good at estimating ranges in, in ARMA. There's a couple ways to do it. You can use the binocular mill marking method. I know there's a post on the forum that describes how to do that. That one's very, very efficient if you know what you're doing. Uh, you can use the map, all right? So knowing how to read the map and determine, okay, that tree line's at 300 meters from my current position. Knowing where you are, knowing where the enemy is, all right? Another great way. Uh, if you read my manual, there's a flash to bang method that works in Arma. It actually works pretty well, especially good against vehicles if they're a long ways out. Uh, but we're not going to cover that, just not worth our time right now. Um, 
Yeah, so that that's about it. And then just kind of sheer estimation is the last one, which uh, you can get pretty good at, especially in Arma, and uh, pretty accurate. Also, uh, laser range finders, uh, that's an easy way to get the range. All right. Uh, and then method of fire and command to open fire. Uh, eh, not as applicable to, to us, but it's certainly if you want to set up some sort of like a uh, hasty ambush or ha coordinate your fires with other people, right? Uh, you know, fire on my command, fire on my trace, all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, basically just giving an order to when you want the machine gunner to engage. Uh, so, does anyone have any questions about uh, any of that? Alright, so uh, Team 4. I'd like you to, so uh, Beagle, I'd like you to give Kilroy a fire order for an enemy, enemy squad uh, that's near a reference point at uh, the green, greenhouse, alright? Oh, just near it? Like, like... Yeah, so... The one all right, right. Kilroy. Reference, greenhouse, enemy squad. Perfect. Exactly. Alright, and then, uh... So, if, uh, if the gunner doesn't see what you're talking about, all right, the best way is to say not seen, all right, and then the, the leader can, you know, step, or the assistant gunner can help him and step through, uh, you know, trying to give a different way of describing the target, all right? Basically do that until he's on target, um, or until he understands what he's supposed to be shooting at, all right? And if you're not clear, ask, all right? Especially if you're not being engaged, it's better to like shoot at the right thing and ask ask the question than it is to shoot at the wrong thing and uh, yeah that can be really bad in some situations. So if you're if it's unclear and you're not taking fire, the best thing to do is ask. If you are taking fire, uh, start by shooting at the guys who are shooting at you. Usually that's a pretty good way to start. All right. Um, all right. So uh, those are basically uh, to give you a target if you need to make adjustments. The easiest way uh, is simply left, right, add, drop, all right, and that's all going to be in meters, all right. So all adjustments are given in meters, right? So if the uh, and you're always adjusting to the center of mass of the target. So we'll talk about what that means in a second, but uh, just for now, remember if adjustments should always be less than 100 meters. If they're off by more than 100 meters, then you get you need to give them a new target, all right, or or go through the fire command again. All right, and you never use adjustments to shift to a new target. So if you have a new target, just give them another fire command. You know, even if it's close. All right, adjustments are only to, to adjust your fires onto a previously designated target. All right, it just simplifies things and streamlines everything. Uh, it keeps things consistent and it gives the gunner more information uh, when he shifts to his new target, so he knows how to engage it. All right, so that's pretty much everything that has to do with operating as a section. Uh, obviously, the assistant gunner is uh, still responsible for security, all right? Uh, so making sure that you're in a good secure position, making sure you're in concealment and cover, uh, that's all kind of, uh, you know, extra things that you can think about. But for the most part, uh, that's the basics of operating the weapon system as a two-man kind of uh, element. Alright, so we're going to talk about machine guns now. Uh, so machine guns are probably the most underutilized or least uh, well understood weapon system I think that we use here at Shaktac. Um, a lot of our missions don't have MMGs, which is kind of sad. Uh, but I, I, I think that uh, when they are utilized, sometimes they're either misused or not used to like their fullest extent. And so part of what I want to do here today is just kind of... Uh, increase people's understanding of exactly how to uh, employ the machine guns and uh, how effective they can be, uh, especially at against infantry. So um, so just a, some quick terminology here. Uh, so in terms of the machine gun, uh, let me see here, where do I want to start? All right. So, uh, machine gun, uh, some just really quick things. So, we're going to define basically the, the, the cone of fire is basically going to be defined as uh, all the different trajectories of the rounds, all right? 
and basically is a result of the dispersion of the machine gun. And the thing you got to remember about machine guns is the dispersion is a is not a it's not a function of the actual bullets. It's more of a function of the machine gun's operation. So the vibrations of the machine gun are what actually create uh, a nice big dispersion on the bullets. All right, and dispersion is a good thing because it's very hard to hit uh, people with one bullet. This is why they've invented automatic weapons. All right, so. Uh, and because of that, machine gun usually isn't effective. Like the first four, three or four rounds are pretty close to your aim point. All right? It's only when you get into the, the fifth through the tenth rounds in a burst that you're really going to pick up any of that uh, dispersion from the actual operation of the weapon. All right? And that is where most of the killing power of the machine gun comes from. So, uh, then you, so we've defined our cone of fire. Basically, uh, we'll define really quickly the beaten zone. The beaten zone is basically where the cone of fire intersects the target or the ground. All right, and it's going to change based on the range and slope of the target, but um, it's basically the area where, if you're standing, you can get hit by the machine gun's round. All right, so if if you're if you intersect the cone of fire, you have now become the beaten zone. All right. Uh, in addition, you can define the danger space, which is where uh, basically, the bottom of the cone of fire doesn't rise above 1.8 meters. That's the height of an average person, but we're not going to deal with that. Uh, I don't see any reason to uh, talk about any of that. But we will talk about, really quickly, uh, class of the fire with respect to the gun. So, uh, there's there's three main types of fire, all right, and uh, uh, or four main types of fire. That is frontal fire, flanking fire, oblique fire, and enfilade fire. So enfilade fire is probably the one that we need to talk about most. So enfilade fire is shooting any is any target where you're engaging down the axis of the targets, uh, down the long axis of the targets formation. All right. So if you're attacking a column, it, you'd be attacking it from the front. If you're attacking a line, it's hitting it from the side. All right. So anytime you can get enfilade fire on an enemy, it's going to only increase your your effectiveness. And this is why we deploy machine guns on the flanks. All right. So machine guns uh, are employed on the flanks because if you're in a line, right, facing an enemy line, if you're on the flank, you have the greatest amount of enfilading fire, all right? Uh, the, looking down a line from the side, it'll appear almost like as an echelon, and at that point, you have to move your gun a lot less, all right, in order to engage successive targets. And uh, if, you can, if you can achieve enfilading fire, all right, that's that's your goal always is to be able to achieve enfilading fire because it means that uh, basically any any shots that disperse up or down are still going to hit the target. All right, so you have them. It's maximally effective, and they have the hardest time uh, returning fire on you. So uh, yeah, you can look through the diagrams there. It's that's in section two two if you want to. Uh, but for the most part, it's pretty self-explanatory. Frontal fire is basically delivered. Uh, to the front of an enemy formation, regardless if it's enfilade or not. All right, flanking is if you're delivering it to the side, and then oblique would be some combination of frontal and flanking fires. All right. Um, so I think the best way to do this is uh, let's go to the range, and we'll talk about some different classes of fires and different target types. So if everyone uh, just follow me over here, and we'll get on the machine gun range. So the first thing we're going to talk about is just kind of your standard machine gun burst. So uh, typically we're engaging from the prone unless it's a special circumstance. Uh, but for the most part, uh, prone just because it adds the most stability. It's really hard to fire the 240 from the hip or from uh, crouch position unless you've got it supported. And uh, that's pretty much the same. Uh, at least with the 240 and with most machine guns, when I'm in the prone, I prefer not to support it. All right, so don't deploy the bipod. Uh, just because it makes it really, really accurate, and it's almost too accurate. The 240 is a very accurate machine gun to begin with, and it doesn't have very much natural dispersion. Uh, so, you know, adding the bipod only increases that particular deficiency in the weapon. All right. So, first thing we're going to talk about is what's basically uh, point fire. So, point fire is fire delivered against a single target. This is like an en a single enemy soldier. Uh, enemy machine gun emplacement, uh, a vehicle, right, like a light vehicle, uh, like a truck or a car or something like that. Uh, basically anything that doesn't have any defined width or depth. And uh, 
So when we're engaging in point fire, all right, we're just gonna shoot standard bursts at the at the target. And uh, for the most part, we'll always talk about uh, basically rapid rate of fire because that's pretty much your normal engagement rate of fire. So uh, rapid rate is defined as basically uh, basically a burst of 10 to 12 rounds every two to three seconds. And that uh, 10 to 12 round burst, the easiest way to, the, to make sure you've got the appropriate burst length is to count tracers. So with machine guns, tracers are put in every fifth round. So if you shoot two tracers, then you've shot 10 to 12 rounds of machine gun fire. All right. And uh, just uh, I'm going to do a quick demo on what uh, 10, 20, 10 to 12 uh, round burst looks like. So that's a tw 10 to 12 round burst. So it's just two tracers, all right, and uh, pretty self-explanatory. Point fire, deliver against the signal target. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? All right, uh, I'm gonna give everyone 100 rounds. All right, I'd like everyone to, to practice 100 rounds of point fire. All right, 10 to 12 round bursts, two to three seconds between bursts. All right, uh, you might have to drop your weapon and pick it up in order to reload it. It's kind of a weird bug when you add ammo. Uh, but everyone, let me know when you're loaded and ready to go. Vega, you ready? Okay. Alright, go ahead and go prone. So, targets to your front. Uh, 200 to 600 meters. 100 rounds. Burst fire, or normal rate of fire, go on. Yeah, so that looked good. Uh, I think everyone gets the idea. Yeah. Pretty self-explanatory. All right. So, um, so after, so after point fire, uh, your typical engagement for any sort of target with any extension. All right, and typically uh, targets are only going to be extended uh, in width. All right, so squads, uh, fire teams, all sorts of stuff. Usually, if you're if they're preparing for battle, they're going to be in a wedge or a line, which is pretty much a linear target. So if you look out to our front, we have a couple linear targets set up, uh, some linear targets with depth. Those are the L-shaped ones. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to engage uh, linear targets. So the the methodology for engaging linear targets is, is basically uh, you begin shooting at the center of mass, and the center of mass is defined as uh, basically the the area of the target that has the most guys, all right. So if they if they're spread out on a line and and the left of the line is really clumped up, right? There's three or four guys within two meters of each other. Uh, that's the center of mass, all right. So the way this works is you're going to pick successive aim points, and you're going to deliver a burst to each aim point before you're traversing to the next one, all right. Starting at the center of mass, you're going to move to one flank, move back through the center of mass, go to the other flank, and then finally. You know, just keep doing that until the target's completely eliminated. And assistant gunners, this is how you're. This is when you're adjusting your your gunner's fire. All right, if he starts centering on something that's not the center of mass, that's when you give him an adjustment back. All right. So I'm gonna do a quick demo here of what that looks like. Uh, so the main thing to remember is you're not using the machine gun like a sword. So when you're firing a burst, you shouldn't be moving the machine gun. You should always have your sight on. You pick one point. You fire a burst, and then the idea is you move laterally so that your next burst just barely touches where the first one went. So in this method, you're trying to blanket the entire line with fire. All right, so this is what it looks like uh, engaging a linear target uh, with area fire.
Alright, so in each burst there, I picked a single aim point, alright, I, and I just used the natural dispersion of the machine gun in order to let the rounds hit the targets, alright. And remember, your, your point of aim doesn't have to necessarily be on a target. It can be in between several targets, and then you let the dispersion of the machine gun hit them. Alright, does anyone have any questions? Yes. All right. Can so, I get a gun? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a gun. Just a second. All right. So, uh, why don't we have everyone go crouch? I'll get chase a gun again and get everyone rounds. When you're reloaded and ready to fire, go prone. So I know you're ready to go. All right. Targets to your front. 200 to 600 meters. Linear targets. 200 rounds. Go on. Alright, uh, just to reiterate, so any, uh, linear target's going to be any target that's not, uh, doesn't have any depth. So if it's a column of guys going away from you, that'd be a target in depth, which is what we're going to do next. Um, so linear targets are guys lined up side to side. Uh, so the spacing on most of these targets is about 3 to 4 meters. Um, obviously, uh, the close ones might be spaced a little further in. But I think, if anything, this should highlight the importance of keeping good spacing as well when you guys are maneuvering. Uh, especially when you're a machine gunner, all it takes is for you to be a little patient, wait for someone to converge a little bit, and you can easily hit three or four guys in one burst. All right? Does anyone have any questions or observations they'd like to point out? Nope. Okay. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do uh, linear targets in depth, or, or targets in depth. Alright, so this is the same idea here, except for that instead of traversing left to right, we're going to be traversing, uh, we're going to add and drop as, uh, as we engage targets. Uh, so, same thing, same methodology, and I hope, I hope you start seeing a pattern here. The pattern is you're going to pick successive aim points, right? Successive adjacent aim points, alright, and then you're going to fire a burst at each aim point and then move on to the next one. So let's see here. Let me find a good depth target. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to engage a target in depth here at about 500 meters. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick my first aim point to be the center of mass and then I'm going to traverse uh, adding, adding and dropping uh, in order to effectively cover the entire target. Right? Long bursts. So... <laughs> So I start at the center of mass, I traverse to one flank, I head back to the center of mass, I go to the other flank. And note, I take two to three seconds between each shot, or each burst, alright? Make sure you have time to get a good, a good, uh, a good sight picture, alright? Really take, it's okay to take time, alright? Uh, 
a lot of people usually they don't add enough time in between their births and and allowing that time that basically allows you to get if, if, if you can get a better sight picture you're gonna actually hit something all right shooters uh, targets to your front 200 to 500 meters uh, targets in depth all right uh, go on target engagement is area or linear targets with depth and basically uh, there's a couple ways you can do this um, these are targets that have both uh, a defined width and a defined depth uh, again you start from the center of mass uh, there's a couple ways to do this you can use Z pattern which is basically you go diagonally up towards one flank move across the top and then diagonally back down towards the other flank uh, you shoot them like in a Z uh, the other way you can do it is um, well, usually that's the best way to do it. Uh, there are a couple other patterns you can use. You can use like box patterns where you go along one flank, then up, and basically uh, do traversing and then searching fire. Uh, oh yeah, searching is defined as basically when you adjust up and down like we were just doing. That's known as searching fire. Traversing fire is when you search left or, or when you traverse left or right. Um, both of them pretty self-explanatory. Alright, so I'd like to transition uh, just because of time constraints. Uh, what we're going to do now is uh, I'd like everyone to split. So one person choose to be the machine gunner. Your other team member is going to be your observer or your assistant gunner. Alright, everyone should have an M16 on their back. I'm going to give them tracer mags. And I'd like everyone to practice, uh, you know, talking your gunner onto a target, having him engage it, alright, and then giving him a new target and having him engage it. And then after about 100 rounds, I uh, want you guys to switch and then have the other person uh, be the assistant gunner. And then the, the gunner will go ahead and, uh, or the assistant gunner will go ahead and be the machine gunner. Um, I'm going to give everyone 200 rounds and two tracer mags. Uh, feel free to use something other than trace to denote the targets. All right. So I'll, uh, I'll shut up so you guys can talk. Um, so yeah, uh, basically when you guys are ready, switch, and when you guys are all done, why don't you everyone come off the firing line to the west when your group's done, and uh, just rally near me, I'll be near the laptop at the table over on the right side. Alright, any questions? Alright. Alright, go ahead and uh, assistant gunner, gunner pairs, targets to your front, 200-500 meters, go on. You ready, Jimmy? Sure. Alright, you kill uh, target in depth. Uh, JB, target five, target six, front, uh, six hundred meters uh, up uh, on the hill. Engage. Yes. Two targets. There. There. Uh, 
that weapon. Alright, you target like that, Tracy. Questions while we're waiting. Uh, no, I mean, I usually like when I'm teaching this. Usually, it's t it's two hours for AT and two hours for machine guns. And I'm trying to compress it, so I was probably going fast. And I understand if you guys don't didn't get something, or I skipped something. Uh, I actually have a clarification. Yeah. So we will never shoot uh, while traversing. It's always point. Uh, right. So each individual, uh, like each individual, uh, sorry. Okay. So, so each aim point, right? You're gonna deliver point fire to it. But then traversing is the act of changing your aim point left or right. Searching is up and down. Uh, but okay. yeah. You always, always are delivering fire onto one aim point. Okay, and this. This is also for uh, moving targets. We should just pick an endpoint in front of them and right. cross the line of bullets. Right, exactly. And that's, uh, if there's also, okay, I'll, I'll mention that briefly, which is, that's known as interdiction fire. So interdiction fire is when uh, you basically are picking aim points in front of the target to keep them from, so it works especially well if, let's say everyone's, they're trying to run behind a building, right? So if your aim point becomes the, the edge of the building, you're going to create basically a wall of lead that they can't cross unless they're going to get shot. Okay. And so this is the idea behind, if you read through the guide, uh, uh, final protective fires or final protective line. So in your machine uh, yeah. gun, so yeah. So when you're a machine gun and you're set up in a defensive position, 
uh, instead of a principal direction of fire, they'll give you a final protective line. And that's basically if the enemies get within some distance, usually about 100 meters to 150 meters of your position, the machine gun automatically switches to firing along the final protective line and you fire cyclic grazing fire. So you fire as fast as you can and you fire so that your bullets never rise above, uh, like, uh, I think it's 0.5 meters above the terrain. And basically it creates uh, basically a wall of lead so that the enemy can't cross it. And if you have your machine guns on the flanks, usually what you'll do is you have your final protective line towards the middle. So you're, you're keeping the enemy from coming up towards the rest of your platoon, if that makes sense. It does. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, any other questions? Like I was telling them, uh, usually I do this in two hours, so uh, I may have skipped something, or something may have been unclear because I was just going fast. 